Okay, hi there. This is Till from Being Wild. I'm here with my buddy Patrick, the butcher from Heartless Butcher here in East Vancouver. Uh, this week, I uh, just come back from the interior with a white tailed deer. It's, it's a nice, heavy buck. And, um, it's a beautiful animal, and Patrick was kind enough to offer some space in a shop here to, uh, to, to butcher the deer and to take advantage of the opportunity to have our good friend Jason come and shoot it for us. So, we'll be able to show you uh, basically how we take a deer from a, from a, a skinned out deer right down to the shops and ropes that you're going to take home and enjoy Okay, so the first step that Patrick's going to do, you're going to take off the, the arms for us, right? Yeah, I'm going to take off the shoulders. Okay, so how are you going to do that? I'm just going to get the knife in here, and we're going to nick through the membrane underneath the arm. And you can see it comes away quite easily, it's right here. So deer are different than like uh, like humans, they don't have an arm to get like we do, right? It's Not like, really, no, it just kind of sits on top of it. Um, so it's actually quite easy to just come off. Yeah, there's this, and it becomes kind of obvious. You sort of see that, yeah, that sinew that kind of holds it all together. Yeah, it's super easy. Just keep on running your knife through these kind of sinewy bits, and the whole thing will lift right up. Now, more often than not, you'll have shot this deer through the chest, so there'll be a lot of bloodshot meat in around this area, uh, which you'll eventually just have to trim away. Now, this this deer actually shot him in the, in the neck, um, so it actually is a great deer to work on. So we can, we can show you that. You'll notice that it doesn't have a, a neck on this deer because I had to cut the neck off and uh, trim out all the bloodshot meat. Anyway, so that's so that's a ham. That's sorry, that's that's the front shoulder right there. So we're gonna, what are we gonna do with this eventually? Uh, well, this is uh, we're gonna probably turn this into shanks and a couple of bone-in shoulder roasts. Uh, the shank will most likely just be kind of uh, boned out in the ground, and uh, the shoulder roast you can tie up and throw in your pressure cooker. Good. Yeah. Okay. So the, the next cut here, we're going to look at do getting this uh, the hind quarter off. Yeah, we're going to take off the leg right here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just take off this little flap of fat here, so I can expose the seam in the muscle. I'm just kind of get rid of that. And then you can open the leg right up. And once again, you're going to find a natural seam in here, and this is going to come right round to the end of the back strap, uh, where it basically attaches to the sirloin. So I'm going to come right down here. So you're cutting up right against that. The, the, up at the top of the pelvis bone there. That's right, yeah. There we go. Just okay. find the edge of the bone. So at this point, we've got an animal where we're, you know, we're back at our point of residence. So we don't have to worry about um, leaving the evidence of sex on the animal. Well, we're transporting, we've got to have that evidence of sex on there. But now that we're cutting it up for, for a freezer, we can go ahead and not worry about it. And now, the thing to pay attention to here is once you come around the inside of the leg, you will find the top of the thigh bone where it attaches into the pelvis. So if you can pop that out of the ball and socket joint, then you can keep your knife along the outside of the pelvic bone and actually take it off quite nice and cleanly. That's beautiful. So one thing I'm really noticing is how flexible your knife is here, Patrick. Yeah, for sure. It's absolutely essential. You can't have stiff knives doing this. You'll lose a lot of yield. Yeah. So I've started packing a boning out knife with me as well with my hunting knife, which is my old purpose sort of knife, just for this purpose when I'm boning it out elk or a deer on the hill. Beautiful. Let's go. Let's come right off. It's going to come off here. You can see it's nice and clean along the bone right there. Perfect. So you can just come right in here with the camera just sort of see how it comes right off there. And you can see here's that, that pelvis bone here and up here. Then we're just going to take the knife and just basically keep it right along the uh, the bone there. So that's beautiful. So this right here, you've got the sirloin right there, and then all the rounds are in here, and then the shank. Perfect. And we'll show you how to break those out. Here, and the next thing is we're going to take off the biggest brisket and the other one, the meat, and then we're stretching it to get us to take off our uh, off, off the take our back strap. So you can show us how to do it. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to start from the bottom right here. Uh, so we'll run right along the kind of chest line. And then you can see again, with these membranes, it's quite easy to see where the bone stops and the meat starts. And you kind of want to work your knife in right along that seam. And then come right to the back here. Wow, this has actually got a really nice uh, amount of rib meat on it. Yeah, this is going to be amazing. And then you see what I'm doing here? I'm pressing the knife in so it's bent almost, so I can keep the knife flexed right along the ribs. And this way, you're not going to leave any meat on the ribs. It will all come off with the back strap and the rib plate. Yeah, you must be excited to eat this. You guys gonna be good on yeah. 
So all, a lot of this meat, so this is the rib meat and it's, and it's really full of fat, which, you know, for the most part, I, with deer fat, it's, it's really greasy, it's uh, pretty waxy, so you can only have so much deer fat in your uh, in your grind or in your stew meat. Uh, otherwise, you'll find it just, just gets a little bit over, 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 overpowering. It holds a lot of flavor as well, especially on a mule deer or a, or a black tail deer. Um, white tail, is not, it's not quite as pronounced how, how flavorful the fat is. So, so some of this like heavier tallow, like this stuff here, um, I'll probably just trim that right off. But some of the stuff is embedded in the meat here. I'll just throw this all in with the grinder and, and grind it up. Getting a little close here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come right down to the dorsal vertebrae, which are the ones that stick up out of the back. And we're going to go as far as we can right back to the pelvis here. And take out as much of the back strap as we can. And then we'll come in through the back line and do the cut the other way. So once we've done that, fold it right back over. We're going to start right here. We're going to put the knife in right alongside the dorsal vertebra. And the knife is going to run along here and it's going to go down to meet the cut that we made earlier when we were taking off the rib plate here. And then the whole thing should lift off. Okay. When I'm in the field, I often take this cut almost right up the neckline here as well, because you got to take the neck off one way or another. So I, I'll take the neck right off so it stays attached to that large piece of meat there, which is easy to yeah. hang and keep clean and stuff. Yeah, we left a little bit on there, yeah. yeah. But this is not that big a difference. Obviously, this is missing its neck. Mm -hmm. One thing I can show you guys here is that you know what, when you do put a bullet through an animal and you hit bone, it causes um, it causes a lot of shock on the animal. A lot of energy is dissipating into the into the bone and into the meat around it, which causes this blood shot. So you'll see blood basically pushing its way through the soft tissue of the animal. Um, this meat, this this stuff here, we, you can't really eat. There's not much you can do with it. So you end up just trimming it off. So um, as a result of putting a hole right through his spine, I ended up trimming off about this much of his neck meat. The other part of his neck, I, I just turned into a nice neck roast. Um, but yeah, so you, you just got to deal with it. So like I said, on the chest, you'll see a lot more of it. That one, that's not too bad shooting for the neck. It's kind of a clean, clean way of doing it. Anyways, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, we're going to get in here and get the tenderloins out. And then we'll probably do something with these ribs. I think we'll probably cut these ribs up and cut these quickly. So the next cut is to get inside this cavity here. And uh, we're going to uh, get the tenderloins out. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, you're going to get your knife inside the rib cage and right up alongside the vertebra. And just kind of work with your fingers, and because the tenderloin is so tender, a lot of the time you'll actually just be able to peel it right out. But if you do use your knife, you'll do a little less damage to it and get a little more meat off the animal. It's kind of tricky. For a... Yeah, you can't stand right in front of the camera, right? So. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> Makes it a little difficult. There's a tenderloin. Beautiful. So we'll trim this up a little bit just to make it look prettier, but yeah, we'll take off a little bit of this uh, this tallow and the fat on the outside and make sure there's no hairs on it, but it'll be one of the special dishes for the year. Um, because it's a unique thing for me to have uh, ribs, uh, you know, they usually put big holes in them and they pull blood shots, so I wouldn't mind being able to uh, stew these ribs. Okay, so you want to keep them all by keep them all, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, and try and open up the chest cavity. That's as far as we're going to go. And then we finish with the saw. Mm -hmm. And we're right, right up to the front. Finish with the knife. Just one side of the hole. Oh, no, I get the wonder. No, yeah. Okay. And then we're going to take them off the top. Basically, we peeled off all the meat muscle groups on the one side. Uh, we can go over this with a 
with our knives, we can take out little pieces of meat here and there and set it a few extra minutes on that little, that'll all wind up in the grind pile. Uh, but basically we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to show you guys how to break down the, the legs and uh, into what we would, what would be our steaks and roasts and whatnot. So we're not going to be able to flip it over. Thanks. So we've got all of the big parts pieced off. This is very much like you have if you bone an animal out in the field. There's a couple of videos I've got about bone animals in the field. This is where you're going to wind up showing up at home with these pieces. So now we're going to take them to that next level where you're actually breaking these down into cakes and roasts and for, for the freezer. Uh, so this whole process, every time you touch a piece of meat, you're going to look at it and you can see a few more pieces, a few more hairs, a few more leaves or dirt. So I've got a damp cloth that I just run over the outside and clean up those last few hairs or any of blood or anything that's, that's lingering on the meat. But so by the end of this process, I want to make sure that anything goes in the freezer, it doesn't have a single hair on it or any kind of uh, foreign debris from the woods. So this is looking pretty clean so far. So it's great. Okay, so what are we going to do next here, Patrick? So next, we're going to take off the shank right here and then we're going to split the leg and the sirloin into separate parts. Uh, so we start with just finding the kneecap, which is right here. It's going to harm bony bit that protrudes a little bit just above the shank, which is this piece right here. And Right above there, there's a little fleshy part, which is actually a tendon. So you can run your knife through the tendon and then circle the leg with the knife, which I'm just going to show you right now. So you run your knife through the tendon on the front, and then you just kind of bring your knife down to the table, turn the whole thing over, and do the same thing on the other side. Now if you can't find the join exactly, you can bring the piece of meat to the edge of the table, and bend it, and the join will just open itself up, and then you can finish running through with the knife. Um, so with the shank here, you can either keep it with this one and kind of raise the whole thing, or you can just bone it out here. I think we're going to bone it out. Probably just bone it out, yeah. Okay. You also, if you had a bandsaw, we're, this is the bandsaw free method that we're going to show you. Yeah, we can, we can buck this up and it would be our, what we call Osoboko cut, which is a lovely stewing shank uh, recipe. Uh, but for this one, we might just leave it just like that. That's really lovely. All right, so the next thing I want to do is take off the sirloin. That's this piece of meat that just protrudes from the top of the leg. Uh, there is a seam in here, it's a bit of a nightmare to find. Uh, the best way to actually do it is just to run your knife straight along the top of the leg. Come in here, kind of clean it up a little bit. Take this out. The actual sirloin itself uh, has got a few slash marks in it, but it's definitely salvageable. So we get rid of that. And this here is a really nice steak. Yeah. So these bits and pieces that we cut off here, some of this stuff, we'll get rid of the towel here and then we'll, I'll trim that up and this will become either hamburger or in my stew meat pile. And so I have a couple piles going uh, for stew and for burger and then of course the cuts that we're going to wind up wrapping up and put in the freezer. So this is one of them. And then this is the, the cap of the sirloin. So this sits right on top of the sirloin and it's actually generally a little more tender. And so you just want to kind of clean it up here. You make this kind of exterior covering off and leave a little bit on, but you don't want a ton. Of a little bit of that fat's kind of nice because I mean it's such a dry. I mean generally yeah. the game is so lean that a little bit of uh, a little bit of fat's nice for the cooking, but then again you got to balance out the yeah. the flavor. And knowing how much to fat to leave on will just come with experience, really. You know, and I mean, that's pretty good. And, and elk, elk and moose are actually much have much milder fats, so. You can get away with leaving a bit more, and whereas deer, generally speaking, is a, a more pronounced flavor. Okay. So as you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these into steaks because these are these are nice little, little chops that I'm going to call rump chops or rump steaks. I was going to cut uh, one inch steaks. Okay. So, so nice like that thing. Yeah. Really good.
Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just taking apart the leg. Uh, now, this is the bottom of the leg bone here, this is the top of the leg bone, and you can actually see a seam running from the bottom to the top. So you just kind of try and open it up along that seam. And there it is. Once you've found it, that seam will run right down to the bone. So you can actually take the muscle off in separate groups without damaging it. And then what we want to do essentially is just keep your knife right along the bone there and just lift out the leg bone, just like that. Then you lift the leg bone up, get your knife underneath it, run it through. Now the thing you want to be careful of when you come in at the bottom is the kneecap is typically left in the meat here. So that's this little bit here. So you make a V-shaped cut and just pull out the kneecap. A lot of people miss that and it goes into the grinder and that causes all sorts of problems. Alrighty. So the next thing we're going to do here is separate the leg out. And again, we're looking for these seams through which we're going to run a knife. And we got one right here. And these muscles are called the rounds. There we go. So that one there is called the inside round because it's on the inside of the leg. So what we typically do with this inside round? This one you can turn into steak. I mean, it's a little big. You might want to do a roast. Yep. Okay. It's a very lean piece of meat. If you have a slicer, it makes good roulade. Uh, and uh, but if you want to, if you make it into roast, you want to bard it, which is injecting fat into it or cover it with bacon or something like that. A lot, a lot of game meat. I mean, I, I, I use a lot of extra fat when I'm cooking with game meat. Yeah. So I mean, bacon is your best friend, really. For sure. Um, so as so as he's cutting away here, I'm just gonna. What I'll do, be doing is I'll be taking a look at this, trying to decide if I want to make it into a roast or some steaks. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just trim it up a little bit. Now that looks like a nice steak. So I'll probably take a few steaks off it. I try to keep my steaks in between uh, three quarters of an inch, both there. That's looking pretty good. I mean, I, you know, I, I I mean, it's nice to have. I got lots of roast in the freezer right now with my help. So. I'll just go ahead and make this into some steaks. Alrighty. Beautiful. So what I'm doing right now next here is separating the outside round from the sirloin tip muscle. Sirloin tip has uh, got a bunch of sinew and stuff running through the middle of it, so it needs a little bit of work before it's edible. Uh, and then this here, the outside round, you want to take this silver skin off here, so you want to run your knife just underneath, but angled up away from the meat. And you can see the angle of uh, the handle there is facing up. And you can just run the knife through it and it should come right off. And then you grab it from the other end and just do the same thing going the other way. There you go. All right. And you want to take off this kind of mucousy membrane here. It's uh, not the most visually attractive thing. The thing with this cut right here is it has these kind of sinew uh, bits running through it. So it starts like that at that end, but it ends up being considerably thicker at the other end. So it's not great for dry roasting. You need to put it into a pot roast for a long time to break that down. Uh, one side of it is very nice and tender, um, but the other side is not. And to figure out which that is, you can turn it over. It's, it's kind of difficult to see on film, but uh, if you look at the sewing tip, this is the top. The right hand side is actually quite tender. It's good for stir fry meat. All right, well, we're going to turn this into roast. So, to make a roast here, we're just going to tie it up real quick. Just to kind of keep it even while it's cooking. And then what you want to do with the roast is just square off the ends. 
and this will prevent the ends from burning while the inside is getting to medium. Well, that's the try to it's really nice right now. It's really good. Yeah. Okay, roast. Uh, we've got a lovely roast, which uh, we'll, we'll slow cook, and, and then uh, this one here, uh, what do we call this piece again? It's the Eye of Round. The Eye of Round Roast. Now you'll notice the, the, the grains of this um, uh, of, of this piece of meat run lengthwise, and what I like to do with this one is I like to um, uh, leave it whole, and I actually cut it up for like a stir fry or for a curry or somewhere so I can cut across the grain, which is, you know, if you're going to do that type of a, a, a dish, um, you really want cross-cut grain meat. Whereas um, you know, if you're gonna cook a steak for you, you want to have the you want to have the grain cut right across like this, so you can see the end grains here. So, so they got some lovely steaks here, lots of steaks. Uh, this is the sort of the uh, the stew meat here, let it go. Most of it's trimmed up pretty nice. A little bit of fat left on it, which is fine when it goes in the frying pan. It'll it'll cook off. And this would be my stir fry loin here and a roast here. So uh, maybe on the other side we might do a couple more roasts, or maybe we'll do some shoulder roasts with that front. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're just moving on to the front shoulder here. Um, this guy here, you'll notice I've left a little bit of hair on it. Uh, in burst plumbing, I believe that's a uh, species of the animal. Uh, and so we've done that here. Uh, you also, at least as a BC, you'll leave a tail on now to help identify the fun species. Uh, but if you had an elk herd, you should want to do this. Um, so anyways, in the field, you can also pull this out of the field to save yourself back on a bit of a I don't do that because I, 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 I find that it's a little easier to have a bone in. Um, for transporting as well as you get a couple nice cuts. I, I really, uh, we're going to do a couple of bone in roasts here, uh, which are my favorite because you can slow cook them and then the marrow from the bone and get some big, uh, slowly flavored dish. So, what do we do next year, Patrick? Okay, so next we're going to take off the shank here. So, what you want to do is just find the join between the, what they call the shoulder round bone and the shank bone, and you want to run your knife around it. It's kind of like upside down. Uh, a little smiley face. Yeah, a little smiley face, yeah, for sure. You need to kind of just figure out where that is. And as soon as you found it, you kind of drag the knife in there, kind of work it over a little bit. Then you drag it to the edge of the table, and you give it a good crack. So I learned this today. This was great. Yeah. So my new trick. And once that's opened up, the whole thing should come apart, in theory. Give me a good press. There we go. I think I actually just broke the joint. What do you normally do with this? Um, I just bone the whole thing up. Generally, no, just keep it as one whole yeah. piece. Yeah. It's this. It's this elbow thing. It's a pain because it comes right up. So you got to get the knife in and then out and then back up. And then uh, yeah, it's just a pain. Totally. Yeah. So, so this one here, like this, this again, we could, we could, if we had a bandsaw, we could butt this up, do lots of both shanks. But really, you know, I, I, I like a little bit of burger in my freezer, so I'm just going to pull this out, throw it in the burger pile. Yeah. All right. So what's next here? So next, you, we can actually see we've got two fairly distinct pieces of the shoulder. The blade is here, and it's actually the blade is defined on the outside by the lines in the sinew that are actually kind of they're triangular, just like the shoulder blade. And if you kind of poke on the meat, you can see where it runs into the top of the shoulder arm bone, which is the bone that runs between the shank and the shoulder blade. And this kind of fatty deposit here is where the uh, the joint is. So what you want to do is you want to get your knife right through the joint. So I can feel it with my finger there. So I can literally just put the knife right in, and then the knife will run right down to the table like that. That's awesome. Turn it around, and then the whole thing splits into two. I'm really going to sharpen this knife. Still, um, I can take my cleaver and knock the top off so I can get at that marrow so it'll yeah. come out when I slow roast it. Um, or I can leave it in and, and put it in some water and it'll work its way out as well. Uh, but yeah, that's a nice roast and, and uh, we're going to bottle that one up. And For sure. It's one of my favorites. And then this guy right here, we're just going to clean up this little flap off the top. This is what would be the flat iron if it was a beef. I'm just going to clean it up as best we can. See, you don't take off stuff like this. I mean, it's fine for eating, but it doesn't look super attractive having these glands in there. And then tidy up on this side. Okay. Turn it over. You've got another nice roast. Now, with this one, it's fairly key. You want to tie it up because uh, it's such an uneven piece of meat that you want to keep uh, keep it together and as, uh, as compact as you can during cooking. Otherwise, some parts will burn and. Uh, some parts will be able to cook.
So what I really liked, and uh, Patrick and I do, I do a pretty similar thing in the field, but uh, it was nice to see Patrick do it here at the shop where you start from the belly and then basically blaze off all the rib meat and of course the, the domain loy on, on, on the deer. Uh, this is really great because in the field, you're going to want to hang this thing to cool it and you've got this one nice big piece you can hang up on a tree um, as opposed to having uh, loy and the neck and, uh, and the, uh, the, the flank all in three separate pieces. So it makes it easier to deal with and it also, uh, yeah, so now we can deal with it here. So what what do we do next year? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take the rib plate off from the back strap and separate it all. Now, I don't know, Dylan, do you like to leave a little bit of tail on it, or do you like, uh, like, do you like to leave a little bit like that? Yeah, I don't mind a little bit of tail, yeah, because okay. it, it usually has the fat there, which is, which is nice with a little foot like that. Yeah, so you want to leave about an inch, maybe. Let me just run the knife right down there. Yeah. We're just going to come straight across the neck. Eventually, we're going to get up to the neck here. Somewhere around here, it goes from the loin in the neck. Yeah. Um, now, do you want to keep the neck on? Uh, we'll pop the neck off and we'll just pop it right in, or I'll just do it. Yeah, I got a couple of nice yeah. necros already from the top part, so, oh, yeah. so this this is a good example of that, of looking at, so we've got some bloodshot meat, because we're up where the bullet went through, so I'm just going to tr trim out that bloodshot meat. What do you think, is it a bit of a hunk of tallow or fat on the top of these relieve it or? There's no fat, I would uh, leave the fat on, and then when you're cooking, depending on what you're cooking with and what you're doing, you'll have the option to remove it. The other thing I like about it is it actually protects the meat, for sure you freeze it, so it's, it's worth longer or so. Yeah, the only other thing, no, you want to take, this is what a butcher would call back strap, which is this uh, kind of piece of, I uh, can't even think of the word now, like a tendon. Yeah, it's a tendon. Yeah, it's a tendon. Yeah, this runs from the neck all the way down. At, one, at some point it gets small enough where it actually doesn't really matter. Um, but up at the top here, you've got to pull this out because this is no good for eating. Okay, yeah. So I'm just cutting the back strap up there. So that's what you're kind of left with. So that's like your little strip loin steak right there. Actually, it looks mm -hmm. beautiful. It's beautiful, that. doesn't it? That's like, yeah, it's definitely the nicest dude. Yeah, I have done. Uh, you want just three, I just do uh, it. Yeah, maybe four. Maybe four. Maybe four there. I mean, you know, I usually cook for two, for two right? So. Yeah, that's nice. I'm cooking for four, I can only take up more. So this is uh, this is what would be your ribeye, something like that, you know. So you've got like the rib cap there, the rib there, and then the tail. That's a nice piece of meat. Ribeye. We basically take care of one half of the deer, and uh, now we're just down to the loins. These guys here, of course, Patrick showed us how to take them off the inside. You'll see there's a bunch of fat on them and stuff which we're going to trim off. Yeah. What, the one thing I gotta tell you, I, you know, I have a habit of doing this. I sort of like save the best parts of my deer for last, and I find that I've got like, you know, two years worth of tenderloins from elk and deer right, right at the bottom of my freezer. Like, eat these right away because they're wonderful. Share them with your favorite people in your life, and because uh, they are they're probably the, the ten, most tender piece of the animal. They're also the most susceptible to freezer food too. Exactly. <laughs> so that's exactly it. So, so go ahead and get them cleaned up and eat them right away. So I might not even throw these in the freezer just so, so I make sure that I uh, eat them right away. Yeah. Yeah, these will really dry out if they're left in the freezer too long. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we want to take this piece off right here. This is called the chain, this little piece on the side. Um, and it's fine, there's good tender meat in there, but there's also these kind of bits of sinew running through. So it's just, it's a little easier and more time saving to throw it back in the grinder. Now, a lot of this stuff will actually just peel right off with your hands, you know? Because it's actually that tender. That's good for eating. Why not? Wrapped up from one side of the animal, so I, obviously the other side of the animal is exactly the same. So we're going to quickly bang that off. But uh, we're going to show you a couple things about wrapping meat just so I get the maximum storage out of it. Sure. And uh, other than that, that's pretty much take care of a deer. So I'll show you that next. Here's what we want to do is make sure that we wrapped up our meat, so we put it in the freezer for up to here. Uh, so how we do it is that uh, we take uh, we have, I have my butcher paper, and uh, it's got wax on the inside. It's set designed for you know, to be put in the freezer. It doesn't hang out in a butcher shop. We've got these extra little sheets that will help uh, add another layer. They help prevent freezer burn. Just wrap that around like that. And the key is to start here in the corner of your of your butcher's paper, and, and roll it up towards the center of the, of the paper. What I'm trying to do is squeeze out any air that's in here. And then once I get to about uh, two thirds of the way up, or just over half, 
I'll uh, fold the ends in. Now I've got sort of double paper on each side. I have a roll up to the top here. And uh, just like Christmas present, a sticker here with that. And then I'm just going to mark it. So this is a uh, Whitetail 2016. This is a uh, loin roast. And it's goodness. Right on. So that wraps up uh, this video. Hope you guys learned a little bit about uh, breaking down your animal and getting ready for the freezer. And uh, we'll see you next time when we eat well. Thanks.